Hello everyone, this is Mr. Informal back with another thoughts, analysis, and rant, and rant. This time, we, or I am talking about the OnePlus 7 Pro. This phone was announced as last week, or could be the week before, but whichever, I finally had time to absorb the knowledge, the information, certain videos, in YouTube to finally give my thoughts analysis and rant and rant but of course we are talking about a company that has the motto up oh, never settle but it seems like they've been settling down and I know there are defenders out there if you're a fanboy fangirls whatever you want to be obviously to me I'm going to tell you straight up right now, I don't see the appeal of OnePlus 7 Pro other than its software, I guess. But its device itself, there's really nothing much for me that or somebody would persuade me from getting an S10e or even getting an iPhone. But whichever, let's talk about specs. So the OnePlus 7 Pro, it comes with the Snapdragon 855, which is the top of the line uh, processor by Qualcomm. It comes with Adreno, Adreno 640, again top of the line. The screen is 1440 by 3120 pixels. Screen resolution with a ratio of 19 by 9. Dual SIM, yes, dual SIM which means that the other the second can also be used actually no there is no expandable memory SD memory card slot so it is a dual sim an absolutely dual sim AMOLED capacitive touchscreen that is 90 Hertz it comes with HDR 10 plus made by Corning Gorilla Glass Wow, 90 hertz. I'll talk about that later. Internal uh, storage is 256 gig, depending on the memory you get, or 128 gig in the 6 gigs of RAM. So if you get an 8 gig or 12 gig, it will come with 256 storage. And if you get a 6 gig of RAM, it will come with 128 gigabytes of storage. Now, there are three cameras. In the back, 48 megapixel. Yes, it comes with a 48 megapixel at 1.6 wide angle with a phase detect, autofocus, and optical image stabilization. It comes with an ultra wide 16 megapixels f2.0, obviously, no IS. And the third camera is 8 megapixels f2.4 78mm telephoto with OIS. Comes with dual uh, flash video. The resolution comes in 4K 30 or 60 frames per second. 1080 comes with 30, 60, 240 frames per second, which means you can do slow motion on that. And I gotta talk about this pop-up or motorized selfie camera it comes with 16 megapixels f 2.0 still not OIS 25 millimeter and the video is 1080p 30 frames per second obviously so it has stereo speakers one in the front and one on the bottom and so 3.5 millimeter jack nope it is not present there is no headphone jack finally finally the usb is 3.1 type c instead of 2.0 type c um comes with fingerprint scanner on the display which is pretty good 4000 milliamps of battery comes with fast battery charging 30 watts wow it will be about eight hundred dollars we're looking around that seven i may be looking at seven hundred dollars seven to eight hundred dollars depending on the model you get 
and of course it will come in multiple colors it will come in let's see what will it come with it will come in mirror gray almond and nebula blue hmm, quite an interesting color names and so that is basically for the specs i'm not gonna get into specific but that is the general specs of it all so what is my what are my thoughts about this phone well it has a lot of going for it 90 hertz 90 hertz on the screen wow 12 gigs of ram wow but do we really need that okay so what are my thoughts on this phone it's the same thing that I've been thinking about with OnePlus 6, OnePlus 5, OnePlus 4. It is what it is. Um, I mean, there's really nothing going for this phone other than the 90 the screens, uh, the 90 hertz screen. But on the user's perspective, when you use it on a daily basis, it doesn't really do anything other than it's fluid when you scroll but that's about it it has three cameras 40 meg megapixels that is absolutely amazing and i do know that they have the nightscape shot which is basically a night shot uh taking good low light pictures but in terms of moving units i think it's going to be the same they're not gonna puncture the cell phone industry they're not gonna make a mark they're not gonna decrease the customer base from Samsung and Apple so it's been doing what it's been doing it's been consistent but there's nothing earth shattering there's no revolutionary and that is what my problem with OnePlus it I don't they're not even going for the never settle uh, phrases anymore that's gone I mean they're basically settling down I mean there's it for them so my thoughts about this phone is that I, I, that's it i mean what what more can i say about this phone it's basically a phone that's just been lingering in behind the scenes of samsung and apple and it's been increasing prices for some reason i don't know why and i'm gonna get to that on my rant but for a manufacturer that wants to sway consumers from its rival well I'm not sure it did that job so let's put it all in perspective here this is my analysis of this phone so never settle the oneplus 7 pro is it a phone that a, a consumer can use yes is it a phone that is widely available no yes you can buy it online but there's a difference between feeling it and actually playing with it in a physical and not only that you also want to use it because anytime you purchase a phone in this price this could be 700 to 800 dollars of course you want to get a feel for it now in terms of industry market is it a phone that will gain ground i'm not sure it will will it gain will it gain, gain ground a little bit yes of course but will it i mean increase its market share and lower the apple's the samsung market share i'd say no both of them are two giants not only that, I don't know why they hired Robert Downey Jr. for their spokesperson when they could use that money for something else. And again, this is the problem. I think the phone itself is great, but the problem of it is that its company is not. Its company is has not been consistent, and I feel as though its company's choices that making this phone not as great as it should be. And so it's gonna gain it's gonna move units but after a year it's not gonna gain any units because of its competition whether it be from Huawei ZTE 
whether it be from Xiaomi. And so the competition is stiff. Not only that, Samsung and Apple both have mid-range phones. Even Google got into it, which is the Pixel 3a. Now, well, that the Pixel 3a could probably move more units than than the OnePlus 7 Pro, but I doubt it. I think the OnePlus 7 Pro will probably move more units than Google Pixel 3a. But don't. But again, that's just my opinion. And so in the in the whole scheme of things. Samsung and Apple basically have nothing to worry about. The only thing that OnePlus should worry about is Xiaomi and Huawei. So let's get into my rant, okay? Let's talk about price. $700 to $800 depending on the model you get. I feel that's expensive. I think they should stick with the $500 range price. That's it. They should never go to the seven to eight hundred dollar territory because just too. I feel as if you're gonna pay that much, might as well get the SNE. Why not get an Apple? Why not get if you got a good deal? Why not get the iPhone XS? Again, if you get a good deal, why not get S10 or the Note 9? I mean, you guys take competition from Huawei and Xiaomi. Another thing is that. The motorized selfie camera, I can see so much going wrong with this, okay? I'm telling you, if you bump this and, you know, no, no. If you bump this camera, mm, I think it's not going to work out. Yes, it's motorized and that's exactly my point. It's motorized. There's just way too many things to fail on that one. Another thing is that, do we really need 12 gigs of RAM? I mean, instead of... Having to offer 12 gigs of RAM, don't even make that model. You can decrease your spending just by not making the 12 gigs model. Six and eight is enough. And having the storage of 256 and 128, that's fine. I got no problems with that. But for the 12 gigs of RAM, that should not be there. The 90 hertz, I'm not gonna rant about that. I think that's fine with me. But what I'm not liking about is too big. 6.67 inch screen? Come on. Do we really need more big phones? I mean, I know you're trying to cater to as many as consumers as you can. But I feel as though this phone is just too big. Too big. The pro Another thing is that... Have you noticed that a lot of men buy this phone? Not a lot of women do? there is a reason for that I mean do I know the reason I don't know but certainly there's a lot of women out there that don't usually like big phones so another thing that I'm not liking about this is the 4000 milliamps batteries a big phone and yet you can only bring out 4000 why not 4500 heck why not got 5000 it's, it's already big enough to have that you wanna and again you don't need a motorized phone I mean motorized camera stop with that and then just put it on the battery side focus on something else so and one last thing as big of a phone this is why not have the headphone jack I don't get it I really don't what's with these Manufacturers not even came for the headphone jack. People still use them. It's not that hard. It's not even that expensive. But it is what it is. They already made the phone. So the OnePlus 7 Pro. It is another iteration to the OnePlus family. Will they continue on their consistency of bringing iterations yes but oneplus 7 pro is not continuing the never settle phrase and that's what saddens me about the company i truly hope they don't settle they never settle and yet for some reason they are on a path 
to settling down. And so that is basically my thoughts, analysis, and rant and rant on the OnePlus 7 Pro. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.